Hey, how's it going? This is Lawrence from Performance Ranch. Tonight, we're going to go through a little nighttime routine that I do here outside in front of the fire. Um, I usually play with these little guys here. So my pups, if you've been following me on my stories or my Instagram, seeing these guys growing up. They're uh, 14 months old now. Great little dogs. You know, pick up to their mama, Roxy. Um, anyways, we're going to get to it. So tonight, we're going to focus on a few specific joints. Number one being your thoracic spine, that mobility in the middle of your back is something we really want to help out with extension and flexion, rotation. Those are the things we're going to work on. Um, you know, being 42 years old you know, and sitting at a desk for half my day, typing in the computer or training clients, uh, being on my bike, just those things that I have to do every day really works in it uh, makes me really tight in my upper back. You know, neck kind of follows along suit. Right, the third joint we're going to hit is hips. Uh, from internal rotation, external rotation, we're going to work on just being able to be strong in good positions. The fourth and final joint we're going to hit tonight is going to be the ankles. Um, ankles for me are probably my biggest issue. Injured my right ankle in 1996. So been a long time since that injury. Um, and I've been nursing it ever since. Um, I've injured it re-injured it multiple times over the years. Um, fortunately, since the way my style of training, more functional, a lot more balance, a lot more coordination work, I don't really have any issues with my ankle anymore. And there's occasional times where I'll, I'll step on something and maybe hit it to the side. And surprisingly, it actually holds intact. But the reason is because I do take it through range of motion that we need every day. So without further ado, we're gonna start off with thoracic spine. So I like using this, this uh, bench here. The nice thing about the bench is I can open up my hips. Um, this is about two feet wide. Uh, if you don't have a bench at home, you can turn a chair around, just kind of sit backwards in a chair, have the backrest here. But again, I'm using this width to open up my hips. I'm getting a two for one special here. Um, big thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start off with my hands right behind my head. So I'm trying to work on this extension through my thoracic spine. The main thing is keeping that core tight. The easiest way to think about it is just trying to pull your rib cage down towards your hips. Watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna tuck my pelvis and now I'm locked in. So now I can't move from my, my, my uh, lumbar spine. I've got this fixed. So I really put in the challenge of my thoracic. So when I put my hands behind my head, it's very challenging. I can feel the extension through the middle of my back and then taking deep breaths to try to get that to relax. use my hands, do a little block. I'm gonna engage my lats and I'm gonna press my shoulders straight back. Oh, I'm gonna get a little pop going on in there. So I've got some extension, got a little mobility action going on. Now I'm gonna put my hands behind my head and we're gonna work on rotation. So I'm gonna kind of mark how far I can go. You know, I can see the corner of my eye, I'm looking at where far my elbow gets back. The big thing is here is really just checking how much rotation you have before you start because we want to try to improve that so i'm going to get here i'm going to drive my left elbow towards my left hip and as i do this i'm focusing on breathing so breathe into the nose breathe out to the mouth again all right so i worked on rotation with lateral flexion i'm going to do a little bit more i get a little further Power is in the breath. That's gonna be the main thing that's gonna help you relax. So now, I got tremendous mobility to my left, and my right is pretty stuck. I don't know if you can see that, but definitely less. Get back up. Actually, gonna forgot to do this on the last time. I'm gonna drop it to the other side. All right, so now check rotation definitely improved. And you about equal on both sides, which is what we're looking for. We're looking for symmetrical movement. It's gonna be perfect because tomorrow I'm gonna go hit some golf balls with some friends. It's gonna be fun because now I just worked on the thing I'm gonna work on now is I'm actually gonna challenge my core by leaning forward. I'm really working on this core. 
for those of you that ride bikes, this is a good position to be strong in because this is where you have to absorb force, absorb energy. So if you're going to go downhill, this is my preferred mode of travel. As I take a hit, I got to absorb that energy with my shoulders and my core. Because if I didn't have a strong core, I'd collapse. I wouldn't have a stable platform for my shoulders. Therefore, everything is weak. I can possibly go over the bars. So we're looking at safety first. And rotate my pelvis forward. It's called an anterior tilt. I'm leaning forward. I get my hands down in front of my head. I call this a W position. Thumbs are up. They're pointing back. And I'm going to breathe out heavy as I try to pull my elbows together. I'm trying to squeeze really deep in the middle of my spine, reaching up again. Yeah, I'm going to reach forward, squeezing down. Yeah, notice I'm pointing my thumbs back and I'm really squeezing my my shoulder blades together after staying in tight. Reaching up in a, this is called a Y position. I don't have much range to get into the eye, so I just go a little wider and I pull my elbow straight down and I squeeze the shoulder blades. This would be the same position you would do for a lat pull down. You grab the bar, you grab cables, you pull and you would squeeze. So same patterns and just now we're working on the mobility of the pattern. So we hit the thoracic spine, we hit some shoulders. Um, the next joint we're going to go to, we're going to go towards the hips. So we're going to stand up for this. All right, so we're starting from the standing position. We're going to hit the hips next. So first thing we're going to do here, we're going to stand in the Captain Morgan position. So you guys know Captain Morgan, right? All right, here we go. We got the foot turned straight out, my knees even with my toes. This foot's now pointing straight ahead. So basically at a 90 degree angle. All I'm going to do is make sure my heel stays down. So we're getting a two for one on this. We're going to get the groin adductor, even a little bit of the hip flexor in the back leg. So if you're standing like this right now and you're extended, meaning I'm going to push my pelvis under me. So I got a little bit of a, a stretch right here. So I'm actually creating this length through my hip flexor. At the same time, I'm going to keep my heel down and I'm just going to drive my knee forward. I'm keeping my heel on the ground using my elbow to push my knee. I'm driving, then I'm gonna rotate back, try to straighten it out. As I straighten it out, get my hamstring, I'm gonna drive forward again, push. So again, I'm using my hand to hold my heel, and that's keeping my foot firmly on the ground. Another big thing I'm doing with my foot, my shoes are off, note that. I'm working on my arch, I'm not letting it collapse. So for those of you that don't really participate with barefoot activities, I recommend you do this routine barefoot. Mainly because you can now create this tension through your foot, create this arch, so now everything is strong. I'm able to drive my knee, keep my elbow down. It's really working on this pattern, and as I drive, I'm actually able to rock through it. At the same time, I'm keeping extending this leg. Get some groin stretched out. Looks, it feels really good. I'm gonna rotate around. I'm gonna face you. You can see my other leg. So extended. It's a little warm right here. All right. Same thing. I'm gonna drive. Use my elbow. Drive directly towards you. Keeping this heel firmly on the ground. This one is a little more blocked up, meaning. This is the ankle I injured. And it's blocked up right through the front of my ankle. So for those of you that have issues in the front of your ankles, we're gonna go through an ankle mobility series later. So just don't worry about it right now. If you feel that, just make note. Because we're gonna really target those ankles. I used to get severe pain lateral in this uh, nerve right here as my ankle bone would push forward actually cause it to pinch, agonizing, and didn't really know I was losing mobility. You know, this was in my 20s. So I've really been hammering ankle mobility for at least 15 years now. All right, so I've got groin. I'm actually gonna get my hamstring. There's a nice little stretch you can do for the plantar flexion, meaning pointing your toes. I'm keeping my foot firmly on the ground, pressing my toes, and I'm trying to straighten my knee out. So as I do that, I'm feeling a nice stretch through this front side of my foot and ankle, all the way through the shin. Got my hamstring as well. Do the same thing on this side. Come here, 
kind of see it from the side. Again, the goal is to keep the toes pressing into the ground. It's very easy to just do this and relax, but now there's no tension going on. We're trying to maintain tension. I have a little uh, seminar I've taught in the past. We call it intention with tension. And the intention of the movement all is solidified with creating tension for the actual movement. So if the tension's through my foot, it's the base of support. And now I'm trying to work on the hamstring length to here. Also the those front side of my muscle here, you know, the anterior compartment. All right, here we go. So we've got hips. Now we're gonna actually take you through a little mobility through the hips. Very easy one to do. Um, I like to just put my foot up here and I'm gonna work on hip extension. So now my foot's here, I'm driving my heel. The reason why I did Captain Morgan first was to allow myself to gain ankle mobility. So now I can really target the hip flexors. And I'm working into this posterior tilt. So I'm tucking under, squeezing my glute. Big stretch to the front. Taking deep breath. Really keeping my core tight. Rib cage towards my pelvis. I'm gonna reach my right arm up. So now I'm creating length through my lat, through my hip flexors, through my quad. Now I'm gonna lean to the side. That lean now adds a component to the lat, QL, the lateral hip flexors, your TFL, even in the IT band. And then I'm also making sure my knee staying in line with my toes. I'm gonna to drive my knee out with my hand. It's not really gonna move, I'm just creating that tension. I'm gonna to rotate towards you, keeping my back foot planted. So now I'm working on rotation. Again, I talked about, I'm gonna go golfing tomorrow, so I need to have this rotation through my hip. Because if I ask my body to do it at a dynamic speed, but I haven't recruited it and taught it how to do it at a slow speed, I'm asking for trouble. All right, so I'm gonna switch sides. I'm gonna face you for this one. So now you notice my knee pointed straight ahead. My heel is firm in the ground. My pelvis is tucked, it's getting my glute. I'm gonna drive forward, focus on this glute squeezing. <sighs> Rip cage is down. I'm not trying to get any range from my lumbar spine, keeping my lumbar spine tight, like an internal bell. I'm gonna reach my hand straight up to the ceiling, up to the sky. I feel this nice stretch, and I'm gonna lean to the side. Still anchoring my foot, getting that tension within tension. As I do that, I start to open up. You can see me. I just completely released. All right, I'm gonna come up. I'm gonna do rotation now. Again, my feet are still pointed straight ahead. I'm getting my mobility and my range through the hip flexors, through the groin, keeping my core tight. Go. So, little series right there. We're gonna get a little tool for the ankles. Just one tool. All right, we're gonna target the ankle right now. The main thing about the ankle, it has a very dynamic use, meaning we can go into what's called dorsiflexion. I'm gonna demonstrate real quick. So this is dorsiflexion, going to plantar flexion. We can also go into rotation, you know, lateral, internal, which is called inversion, eversion. Um, but just to make it simple, those are the kind of the actions of the ankle. Well, Remy likes to play with the ankles too. All right, so the first thing we got to do with the ankles, we're going to use a little tool. Foam roller, more than likely you have one. Get down on my knees. I'm going to place the foam roller right at the band of my ankle. That's called your retinaculum. It's a band of tissue that surrounds the ankle tendons. All those tendons that come off the muscles in the anterior compartment, your anterior tibialis and you know, your shin splint muscles, that gets held in place by basically strapping tape. This tape holds it down. That tape can get really tight and impede our, our ability to get range of motion in there. So we're gonna start here first, and we're just gonna rock it back and forth. And I'm gonna put my, uh, my hands here on my heels, and I'm just gonna be pressing down my heels. I'm creating this, this pressure into the navicular. Because I do this so often, my ankles can relax very easy and I'm already getting my navicular to adjust. I feel it popping and it goes right back in place. 
So as I do that, I kind of scrub. You know, I do this pretty frequently, so I don't feel any tension. More than likely, if you've never done this, you may be feeling some pain. Just keep at it, it will get better. Um, I prefer a roller that has some contours to it, uh, not just flat, because it's kind of scrubbing it. I'll do that to the other side. All right, the next thing I do in the same position, I'm gonna place pressure into my heel. And as I do that, I'm making my ankle bend. So I'm literally pressing and going around. I get some nice adjustments going. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's popping. All right, so that one's done popping. Means that navicular kind of got back in place. Get back to the left side. The one thing I have linked to ankle stiffness, this lack of dorsiflexion, for me, it correlates directly to lower back and hip pain. When my ankle starts hurting, my lower back starts to hurt pretty you know, quickly within a day or so. I didn't know before that all I had to do was work on my ankle mobility. The bones are just getting really tight, the muscles in there. So I never knew how to do this. Um, I've seen chiropractors in the past and um, I've worked with the Elite OSM, they're awesome. They'd show me that a lot of it was stemming from my ankle. So I've stayed on top of my ankle for the last couple years. And surprisingly, I have had no lower back pain and haven't had any hip pain. And when it starts coming on like a little bit, I hit this real quick and pain's pretty much gone. It's actually really nice to feel like I can remedy myself. Um, so cool. So now I did that. The big thing I'm going to work on now, I'm going to pull, pull this foam roller to my knees. And I'm going to work on stretching out the plantar fascia on my foot. So the goal is to make a 90 degree angle right at the, the toes here. That's my big toes are 90. My heels are up. I'm getting a nice stretch in the plantar fascia. I'm going to hold that there about 30 seconds or so. I know this is something I didn't do before, but last year I started swimming. My ankles and my feet would get really sore and tired just by kicking, and I would use fins a lot because I'm not very good. Um, but I had to really work on this, and then with the, using the fins, I was able to increase my plantar flexion and dorsiflexion of my feet. And now my ankles feel even better, which still not 100%, but I'm 42, so again, anything is better than nothing. Okay, I'm gonna place my knees on the pad. I'm gonna put my toes on the foam roller and I'm gonna bring my heels together. That's the key, keep the heels together. There's a little pole here. I'm gonna create that arch in my foot like we talked about earlier. I'm driving my knees out and I'm just gonna walk myself down. Okay, we call this the walk down squat. I'm gonna pull my hips towards the, the pole here. I'm gonna breathe. So I'm gonna sit in this position and my hips drop. I'm gonna get work on an extension through my thoracic spine. Still planting my feet to the ground, breathing, and as I breathe and relax, my hips release. I'm able to pull myself forward. <sighs> Walk back up again, and as I do this, I'm pressing into the ground, and I'm also pulling myself into the ground. So I'm actively using my hamstrings to pull myself down. I'm gonna actively use my hips and my glutes to push me back up. It's not a passive exercise. It's very active. <sighs> Make note how I'm getting more efficient the more I do this. <sighs> All right, I wanna thank you for joining me for my nighttime mobility routine. It's been great sharing you what I do every day, something that's helped improve me. My mission, and the mission of the Performance Ranch is to help you live life beyond the gym walls and rise above the status quo. Subscribe to our channel, like this video, share this video. We want to be able to extend our knowledge and show people the things that are, we're doing, things from the inside out. Check it out, subscribe to the video, stay tuned. Thank you very much, you have a great night.